Welcome to The Cross in the Desert, speaking hope and freedom to Iran. I'm your host, Randy L. Noble. It's really great to be back with you. I've had a brief sabbatical from making this program, and it really feels good to once again to be able to produce these very special video programs. I've been really busy, and it's really good uh, to start 2014 off with a brand new book and I want to show you a picture of it. Here is my newest publication Beauty from the Ashes The Promise Fulfilled. Now Beauty from the Ashes is the sequel to this book that I wrote a couple of years ago The Promise We Will Meet Again. Beauty from the Ashes is the story of Rachel and Hannah being reunited 40 years later both of them grew up as young Jewish girls in the Warsaw Ghetto at the time of the German invasion in September of 1939. And it's the story of survival. It's the story of friendship. And in Beauty from the Ashes, we have some unresolved situations becoming resolved. Beauty from the Ashes is a nice, neat way of saying that God himself brings special blessings out of the sufferings and the pains that we endure. And because both Rachel and Hannah endured great pain and hardship in the uh, concentration camps, they both reunite and share their stories of how their lives were devastated through that pain and suffering. I really, really am excited about this book because the title is something that I think about often. I think about suffering and evil and how people's lives are, are just devastated through some mishap, something that happens in their life, the death of a loved one, uh, a serious illness, going through the Holocaust. And so this is a book of hope, I'm praying, that will help um, heal some of the scars in the lives of those that have endured such great hardship. And so the new book, Beauty from the Ashes, The Promise Fulfilled, is available through me on my Facebook page. And it's also available up on Amazon.com where you can also purchase a copy. I wanted to tell you briefly about this book, Beauty from the Ashes, as kind of a segue to the story that I now want to share with you. I'm going to show you some photographs of a very, very special lady that has truly impacted my life in just the last two weeks. And this is a picture of Sanaz Nazami. And this is a nice, really comfortable looking picture of her, I think from just a couple of months ago. Another picture of my friend Sanaz Nazami during Christmas time and celebrating kind of dressed up in like a Santa Claus outfit. Here's another nice picture of Sanaz. And this is kind of a, a relaxed look of Sanaz, I believe, at her hometown in Iran. And this one, this is the hardest one to show you. This is Sanaz with her husband, Nima. Take a good look at that picture because I want to tell you a story. This posting really says it all. This is the last posting on Sanaz's Facebook page. And I want to read this to you. It says, You matter. You might be but one drop in a bigger ocean, but even that drop causes ripples which affect every other drop. It's written by Sue Krebs. How true this last posting on Sanaz's page is, and I will explain a little later. I think many, many people all over the world have gotten to know this beautiful 27-year-old Iranian girl. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Sanaz Nizami grew up in Iran, and she had a goal in life to be well-educated she was a very, very young, busy girl. She helped out a lot with mentally ill patients and elderly people, volunteering her time, giving of her time, sacrificing of her time. 
One of the very most interesting things about Sanaz is that she was very proficient in several languages. She had a, a, an associate's degree in French translation. She was also well conversant with English, primary language in Iran, also German and Spanish, and a little bit of Arabic. She spent many, many, many hard working hours, not only volunteering, but getting her education. And Sanaz decided one day to further her education, and one of the ways she wanted to do that was to come here to the United States. She had a goal in mind. She wanted to get an advanced degree in environmental engineering, and she sought out a school and found one that would accept her in Michigan, the state of Michigan here in the United States. Somewhere along the line, Sanaz found someone on the internet that she was attracted to. And of course, I showed you that picture of Nima. They became very strong, close friends, very strong and close, perhaps romantically involved, texting back and forth. And at some point in time, before Sanaz came here to the United States, they met in Turkey, I believe. Now, her father and, and sister were not real happy about this idea of them getting married. And they voiced their opinion about that. But Sanaz decided that, that she knew this man, that she loved this man, Nima, and she decided to get married to him. The am amazing thing is that uh, Nima was, a, I believe, a citizen here in the United States, living in Los Angeles, California. I think his parents were Iranian, but he himself truly didn't ever live in Iran like Sanaz did. At any point, um, they became married, I believe in August of 2013, just a few months ago, and came here to live in the United States. I want you to think about those beautiful pictures I just showed you, and then this posting on Sanaz's page. This was to be her last posting. Tragically, the police were summoned to her home on December 8th of 2013. She had managed to get off a call to 911, complaining that she was being abused by her husband, physically abused. By the time the authorities arrived at her home, they found her unconscious on the floor and unresponsive. She was rushed to a hospital and then transferred later to Marquette Hospital in Michigan, where she was pronounced brain dead. Apparently, between the time that Sanaz made this very, very uh, life-threatening call to the police, her husband, Nima, had repeatedly slammed her head down against the floor, causing massive head injury to this beautiful Iranian girl. When she arrived at the other hospital in Marquette, I believe, she was pronounced brain dead. The nurses and the supervisor there were very eager to find out more about her. They went online and found her resume online and found a way to contact Sanaz's parents in Iran. You can imagine, can you, what that impact was for their parents to hear that their precious daughter was lying in a hospital in Michigan in the United States, pronounced brain dead, that there was no hope for her. Well, in an act that can only be described of great mercy and compassion, this hospital staff, these nurses, got a computer, hooked up a camera, and in the final hours of her life, they witnessed their daughter dying. They were able to communicate through an interpreter of Farsi and gave the nurses instructions to tell Sanaz, I love you to walk over to her bed and to kiss her on the forehead. And at the end of this, when she died, the father agreed to have Sanaz's organs donated, transplanted. Surgeons were summoned after her death to immediately uh, remove these organs. And out of this horrible tragedy, beauty arose, beauty from the ashes, just like the book I showed you. Sanaz's vital organs were immediately transplanted into the lives of eight Americans. And because of her sacrifice, because of the willingness of this family to donate her organs, eight people 
have a new life because of this beautiful Iranian girl who was passionate about life, who was dedicated, and in the end gave her own life in the midst of this tragedy so that others might live. And that's why I wanted to show you this picture in the beginning. Because it was on Sanaz's page, when I heard about her story, I wanted to write about her. Not just rehashing the details of what happened, but to say something in honor and tribute of her. When I went on her Facebook page, this is the first thing that caught my eye, this posting. When I read about the tiny drop that's a ripple of life affecting other, other ripples in the ocean, I knew right away this was Sanaz. Sanaz is that ripple of life that changed the lives of so many other ripples in an ocean of needs. This story has done so much to grip me personally, but I want to remind you that there's something more we need to learn from this story. Another lady named Seppi, who's on Facebook, created a special page in honor of Sanaz. And it's called Sanaz Nazami, Rest in Peace, Abuse, Stop Abuse Against Women. Sanaz Nazami, Rest in Peace, Stop Abuse Against Women. I want you to remember that because I want you to go to this site, this group on Facebook, and become involved in stopping this kind of horrible abuse against women. There's something we can learn from this tragic story. There's something beautiful that came out of it, but something we need to learn that Sanaz herself would want us to know about. And that is to know the warning signs, the early warning signs of abuse. I'm going to read you what those warning signs are, but in the end, I want you to join this group. Uh, Seppi is a wonderful, dedicated lady, a journalist, in fact that wants this page dedicated to the memory of Sanaz so that people that come on this page can post about local women's shelters in their area if someone needs help. We're going to take this tragedy and do something beautiful because of it. And one of the ways we do that is educate. There are early warning signs and the beginnings of an abusive relationship. This is from the West Island Women's Shelter that Seppi put up on this page. What are some of those warning signs? I can remind you, you can click on this link and read all about this. I'm going to just read the seven signs because there's an in-depth uh, explanation under each sign, which unfortunately I don't have time to read, but you can later. The early warning signs includes that the male spouse intimidates you when he is angry. There's a form of intimidation constantly when he reacts in anger. He also has double standards. He has a different set of rules for his behavior than yours. Watch out for that. He has negative attitudes toward women. He always talks about these negative attitudes in front of you. And, and, and he mentions these things constantly. Another warning sign of a man that is about to become abusive is he treats you differently around other people. Uh, they put on a show of treating their partners like gold around other people when everyone is watching and reserving f most of their abuse for times when no one else will see them. And this is definitely a facade. It's very deceptive. Another warning sign is he appears to be attracted to vulnerability. What does that mean? Well, some abusive men are attracted to women much younger and are at different developmental stages more than they are. And they may, may be attracted to women that have a recent traumatic experience. He is attracted to the power imbalance in this type of relationship. So he's very manipulative in this kind of relationship. Another warning sign is he speaks disrespectfully about his former partner partners, his former girlfriends. This is what he loves to talk about and brag about. He is also disrespectful towards you as the woman. He does favors that you don't want or puts on a show of generosity and makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, he's attempting to create a sense of indebtedness on your part. So he does all these favors and all these kind acts. It's all for attention so you feel indebted to him. He is possessive and jealous. He is self-centered. And nothing, nothing is ever this man's fault. He gets too serious too quickly about the relationship. He 
abuses drugs or alcohol, he pressures you for sex. These are some early warning signs that might help you if you're in an abusive relationship. I encourage you to go to Sanaz Nazami, rest in peace, abuse against women page. It's really, really important that you do this. When you go to this page, you're going to learn specific things that will help you in this relationship that you're in. But these are very big signs. Sanaz Nazami, rest in peace, stop abuse against women is the name of the Facebook page. I want to close by reading a psalm from the Bible. Uh, I really believe strongly in the Word of God. I'm a Christian. And I want to tell you that God Himself can rescue you from an abusive relationship. And the psalm I want to read to you is from Psalm 72, where it says of God, He will rescue the poor when they cry to Him. He will help the oppressed who have no one to defend them. He feels pity for the weak and the needy, and He will rescue them. He will redeem them from oppression and violence, for their lives are precious to Him. Your life is precious to God. He hears your cries. He says he will rescue you. And so I really, really pray that if you're in an abusive relationship and many of those signs are present in that relationship, please know there is a place where you can get help. Go to that Facebook page, Sanaz Nazami. Sanaz is S-A-N-A-Z. Nazami is N-E-Z-A-M-I. Rest in peace. Stop abuse against women. It is a Facebook page that is a life-saving page that will connect you to local women's abuse shelters. I want to thank you so much for joining me on this very special program, a tribute to Sanaz Nazami, Ripples of Life in an Ocean of Needs. I will see you on the very next Cross in the Desert. My name is Randy Noble. Have yourself a great week, and God bless you.